Praise the Lord, church. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tusalimiane ya hewani. Hata wale ambao wanatufuata those that are following us online. We greet you and welcome all of you to the house of the Lord. ACK Kenyatta Road, this blessed day of the Lord. And as we join in this uh, worship, let's all humble ourselves before the Almighty God who is here with us and who bless all of us. Shall we pray? God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. Oh, how unworthy we are feeling because we are in the presence of a holy God. And we pray, Father, that you forgive each and every one of us. Cleanse us with your precious blood. And let your Holy Spirit be here with us that all of us will receive from you and leave this church empowered and prepared to face the challenges of this day and week and month and year as we continue to be rooted in Christ. Give us a good beginning and a good ending in this service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we be given the opening hymn? The opening hymn on the screen as we proceed with the service. Come ye that live, love the Lord. Quiet.
Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never last. The Lord be with you. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Let us go to the house of the Lord. I was grand when they say to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I would wish that we all be seated and join in that prayer of humility, item number four, alternative one, together. Almighty God, you bring to light things hidden in darkness and all the shadows of our hearts, cleanse and renew us by your spirit that we may walk in the light and glorify your name through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. I'll read the shortened form of the Ten Commandments. The shortened form of the Ten Commandments or the summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first and great commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Together, amen. Lord, have mercy and write these laws in our hearts, we pray. Shall we all rise up to glorify the Lord? Item number eight. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Be glorified at home. Be glorified in China. Be glorified in Kenya. Be glorified on now. Be glorified in heaven. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Forever three in one. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll proceed and do the reading after. And now I would wish that we all join in uh, the issue of praising the Lord. I want us to prepare to praise the Lord. As we do prepare that, we shall all join in confessing and affirming our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. Uh, item number 18, shall we all stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, right from right, true God from true God, begotten not made, one of being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake was crucified at a point of spirit. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures and sent into heaven. And he sit at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom you have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We will proceed uh, with prayers as indicated on item number 19. Kindly let's all be seated. Let's all be seated as we proceed with this part before we go to prayers of intercession and our praise and uh, presenting ourselves before the Lord. And now, may the bishops and leaders of our churches 
have wisdom and speak with one voice. Amen, Lord have mercy. May the leaders of our country rule with righteousness. Amen, Lord have mercy. May justice be our shield and defender. Amen, Lord have mercy. May the country have peace and the people be blessed. Amen, Lord have mercy. May the flocks and hands prosper and the fish abound in our lakes. Amen, Lord have mercy. May the fields be fertile on the harvest plentiful. Amen, Lord have mercy. May we and our enemies stand towards peace. Amen, Lord have mercy. May the love of the Father touch the lonely and the believed and the suffering. Amen, Lord have mercy. May the path of the world be swept of all dangers. Hallelujah, the Lord of mercy is with us. And now we all join to praise the Lord, read by the praise and worship team, kindly those of us who are in. And I remind that all of us, as you come, whether you give your offertory through the Empesa, kindly pick an offertory box and fill in the details because we need accountability and transparency even in our giving. And this is why we have introduced the envelopes. So offer three envelopes, uh, kindly pick yours and fill in the details that uh, helps you not to bother very much even about sending the message uh, to our office number when you pick the envelope that is taken care of. So the ushers will be able to give you your envelope uh, which you didn't pick, kindly request whatever you want. Praise and worship kindly. Let all be upstanding for the praise and worship as we proceed with our service. wakati wa kusifu na ningetaka tumshukuru Mungu tumsifu tuwashe moto tucheze turuke tupige makofi
our Father. Together, our Father, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we come before your presence with thanksgiving in our hearts, O God. Thank you, Father, for the way you have taken care of us. Throughout the week, Jehovah God, you have watched upon us, O oh God. And this morning, yet again, Father, you have brought us in your presence, O oh God, so that we may worship you, we may honor you, O oh God. We give you thanks. We don't take it for granted that we are here this morning, O oh God. It has taken your hand, O oh Jehovah God, Knowing where we were sometimes back, oh God. And now, Jehovah God, we are back when we, are, we see ourselves full in your presence, oh God. We give you thanks, we give you praise, oh Jehovah Father. This morning, God, as we approach your throne, oh God, we want to thank you for our families, oh God. We want to present all family represented here, oh God. We present our children, we present our husbands, we present our wives, O oh God. We present our brothers and sisters unto your throne, O oh God. Thanking Jehovah Father the way you have walked with them, O oh God. Even at this moment, God, we thank you. Because no matter how hard things are, God, you have seen us through, O oh God. Receive all the glory. Receive all honor, O oh God. This moment, God, we want to remember our children and especially those who are in higher institution, O oh God. Those who are planning to go back from tomorrow, Jehovah God, to do their exams, O oh Lord. We pray that, Jehovah God, you will be with them. It's a long time since they have been back to class, O oh God. Jehovah God, we pray as they do their exam, O oh God. Give them, Jehovah God, the spirit of remembrance, O oh Jehovah God, so that what they have read, O oh Jehovah God, they will be able to apply to oh Jehovah God in that exams, in those exams, O oh God. We commit them, O oh God, even as we pray for parents, O oh Jehovah Lord, knowing how financial, the way they have gone through financial challenges, O oh God. And we know right now they're expected to pay for their school, O oh God. Silver and gold belongs unto you, O oh God. And we are trusting in your holy name, O oh Jehovah God. None of our children will be able to do exam, Jehovah God, because of lack of finances, O oh God. Provide for them, O oh God. Provide for all their needs, O oh Jehovah Father. And by the end of everything, O oh Jehovah Lord, your name will be glorified, O oh God. Even as the Ministry of Education is preparing for the other student to go back to class, O oh God. We pray that, God, you keep on guiding them, O oh Jehovah God. Keep on giving them wisdom, O oh Lord, on how to implement uh, the, the, the program, O oh Jehovah God, or the other student, O oh God. Thank you, God, for how far you have brought them, O oh Lord. This morning, God, we want to commit 
our servant, your able hands. Once again, as Kenyatta Road worshipers, O Jehovah Lord, you know you have given us a responsibility this season, O God, to build this sanctuary for you, O Lord. And on Sunday, Jehovah God, we are preparing all of us to come together so that we can roof this house for your glory, O God. Father, we just lift our hands unto you, O God. You are God who provides, Jehovah God. Provide for us, O God, so that we'll be able to finish the roofing, Jehovah God, on Sunday, O God. We are believing and trusting in your holy name, Jehovah Lord, that you will be able to provide for us. And come Sunday, Jehovah God, by faith, O Lord, that we'll be able to raise the amount which is expected, O God, so that we can move together to the next level, O God. Thank you for how far you have brought us. Thank you for the commitment of these members, O God. Thank you for the sacrifice they always do, O Jehovah God, to make sure that all is well in your house, O Jehovah God. Keep on remembering them, O God. Keep on remembering their businesses, O God. Keep on, Jehovah God, remembering whatever they do, Jehovah, to make a living, O God. I speak a word of blessing upon their work, O Jehovah God, because they have never forgotten your sanctuary, O God. You told Cyrus in the book of Isaiah, O Jehovah God, you will lead him to the hidden treasures, O Jehovah God. I am going, I'm praying, Father, with a lot of humility. May you lead these members unto the hidden treasures, O God, Father, so that they will be able to receive and remember your house, O God. And Father, they will be able, Jehovah God, to enlarge their territories, O Jehovah God, because it is according to your words, O God. Among us, if there are those who, Jehovah God, who are challenged, O God, Father, remember them, O Jehovah Lord. Come to them at their point of need, O God. Let never, let them never lack, O Lord. We also want to pray among us, Jehovah Lord. Maybe there are those who are not well. There are those who are sick. They have family members who are sick, O God. This is our God we want to speak a word of healing upon their lives, O God. May they receive healing, O Jehovah Lord. Wherever they are, Jehovah Lord, we pray that God heal them because you are God who heals, O Lord. This moment, God, as we pray, we want to remember you are church, O God. Thank you for our bishop. Thank you even for the vicar general and all who, all of us who work under him, O Jehovah God. We pray that you continue to protect him, O Lord. We pray that you continue giving him wisdom, O Jehovah God, so that Jehovah God, this church, Jehovah God, will continue growing from one glory to the next the other glory, O oh God. We pray for him and his family, O oh God. Always watch upon them, O oh God. We won't forget to pray for our nation, Kenya, O oh God. Father, we commit it unto your able hands, O oh Lord. We see how the politics are going, Jehovah Lord. How we pray, our Lord. We won't be, div be divided as the people of Kenya because of people's selfish needs, O oh Jehovah God. We just pray that Jesus Christ, you will rule in this nation, O oh God. We pray for the president. We also pray for the deputy president, O oh God, and all those in the administration of this nation, O oh God. Always remind them by the end of each, by the end of everything, each and every knee shall bow before you, O oh God, and they will account each deed and even the work they did they did when they were alive, Jehovah God. So let them remember that they are working for you so that they can do it according to your will, O oh God. Now we just surrender the speaker of your word this day, O oh God. We pray that, Jehovah God, you will reach him so that he, you will use him so that you will be able to reach us, God, for the glory and honor of your kingdom. And it is Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Continue in that mood of prayer as we continue with the Holy Communion service, which is a marathon one, that uh, when we are through with the Holy Communion service, then other things will follow. Our hands are well sanitized and washed, so we take Holy Communion, and then other things will follow. And now we'll turn to the prayers of penitence, prayers of penitence according to uh, the program, and it's all already on the screen, so that we can be able to follow let even those that are at home uh, or watching us uh, be able to follow what we're doing. 
Hear the words of challenge and comfort our Savior Christ says to all who follow him. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Come to me, all of you who are tired of carrying your heavy loads, and I will give you rest. So all of you who repent of your sins, who love your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the way of Jesus, come with faith and take this holy sacrament to strengthen you. So let us reverently confess our sins to the Almighty God together. Almighty God, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but you have corrupted ourselves and damaged uh, your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and regretted to do right. We are sincerely sorry and have to repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your son. Remake us and lead us by your spirit, the comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, mighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth. Remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. Strengthen your life in this kingdom and keep you upright to the last day. Through Jesus Christ, our merciful high priest. Amen. Together. Thank you, Father, for forgiveness. We come to your table as your children, not presuming but assured, and trusting ourselves but your word. You, you hunger and thus for righteousness, and ask for your hearts to be satisfied with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. And now we'll be given a hymn as we prepare uh, the holy uh, table uh, to proceed with the service. Can we have a, a hymn? we proceed. Choir will lead us as we do the second hymn as indicated. Quick, can we move on? Shall we be all upstanding as we sing and if it stays, we can pick even a chorus as we proceed.
proceed with the Ministry of Sacrament. Ministry of Sacrament item number 25. We remain standing for thanksgiving and remembrance. Is the Father with us? Is Christ among us? Is the Spirit here? That is our God. We are His people. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our delight to give you thanks and praise the great Father, living God, supreme over the world, creator, provider, savior, and giver. From a wandering nomad you created your family. For a burdened people you raised up a leader. For a confused nation you chose a king. For a rebellious ground you sent your prophets. In these last days you have sent your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, delivering your will, dying, raising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him you have poured out your Holy Spirit, filling us with right and life. Therefore, with angels, archangels, faithful ancestors, and all in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. And now we proceed, we remain standing, Almighty God, over now of all things. We thank you for giving up your son to die on the cross for us. Who owe you everything? Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. On the night that he was betrayed, he took blood and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this as of do this in remembrance of me. Together, amen, his body was broken for us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We are brothers and sisters through his blood. We have died together. We will rise together. We will live together. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high together. Amen. Jesus is Lord. This is the feast of victory. The Lamb who was reign has begun his reign. Hallelujah. And as our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Let's all be kneeling or seated as we join in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on others in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now we break this blood to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share one blood. The cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Draw near with faith and receive. Christ is the host and guest. Christ is alive forever. We are because he is. Lamb of gold, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. And now the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you, keep your body and soul in eternal life. Take and eat in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for you, 
keep your body and soul in eternal life drink this all of you in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful amen amen what we are going to do we'll come in one line and to do that kindly keep distance let us not flock we we'll come in a line you take the blood and you you get the, the the cup and then you go back to your seat as we proceed with the service <laughs>
we all be upstanding as we do the after communion after communion can we go there after communion we do alternative a that is item number 36 as we pray almighty god together almighty god eternal father we have sat to fit learn from your word and eaten from your table we give thanks and praise for accepting us into your family. Send us out with your blessing to live and to witness for you in the power of your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead. Amen. Shall we be seated kindly? And I invite uh, Mr. Muraidi. Is Mr. Muraidi with us? Mr. Muraidi is here with us. We had an agreement with him that he was to be reinstated back to Holy Communion today. So if we don't have it, have him, then we proceed with the service. And now, shall we all be stand up standing again? Let us stand up again. Let us stand up and now the cross, 
the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. All our problems, we send them to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties, we send them to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works, we send them to the cross of Christ. All our hopes, we send them on the risen Christ. Amen. Uh, shall we be seated and request the choir to do their presentation? Kindly. As we prepare for the matangazo, the announcement, and also uh, what we need to know.
let us appreciate our choir. Thank you so, so, so much. We want to thank God for all of you. I now want to take the opportunity once again to welcome all of you out of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, as I said earlier, and we need to rejoice and thank God for the many blessings that the Lord has given to us. And this day, we have a number of uh, items still remaining in our today's program, and I want to believe that we'll be able to go as fast as we can to be able to complete the program as indicated. One, uh, I would wish to announce that uh, the Interfaith uh, Commission that deals with all issues pertaining worship in this nation, particularly during this COVID-19 time, uh, extended and revealed the regulations that were given to us. And uh, you see now we are more. We could only repeat a number eight or seven before, but now we have gone to around 150 because the social distancing was reduced from uh, 1.5 meter to 1.2 and that has given us uh, more space as we can accommodate uh, more people the other thing that i would wish to announce to us is that the sunday school children are now allowed to come for sunday school even those are those are below six and i think very soon we'll be announcing a baptism service and churching services uh, for those that can do it because now we have been allowed uh, even the children to come to church and even those who are over 65 uh, have the permission to do that but we have to take personal responsibility uh, to protect ourselves our masks on uh, the the regular washing of our hands and making sure that we avoid those gatherings as we have seen in political meetings i think the political class is failing us and if there will be a recurrent and uh, there will be uh, a corona rise uh, i think uh, this will not be blamed on the church because i believe as a pastor that the, uh, the churches have been so so uh, committed to making sure that the regulations are followed so kindly when we come to our children kindly don't bring them here register them and let them go to sunday school the teachers and uh, all those that are concerned are taking care of our children so we have the the sunday school children uh in, with the teachers we have the youth service right now there is a holy communion in the youth service uh being conducted by none other but uh, reverend ward I requested him to come and do that for me uh, rather than inviting somebody else from very far. And then the youth service, uh, which is with Reverend Boru, uh, we want to make sure that things run and run well. We do not want uh, any, 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 any problem. Uh, we need to stay safe because we belong to the Lord and there is a lot that we need to do. Two people one or two things one is uh, the mother's union chairperson who will tell us about uh, what happens today what happens next week and on Sunday what we need to do I would also want to invite uh, Patrick who will share with us uh, some highlights on the church construction we had a very successful meeting uh, on, uh, on on Saturday is it Saturday or Friday night should be Friday night and uh, we came up with uh, uh, very good recommendations and we believe that we need now to come back and take uh, 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 what we need to, to do uh, so that we may complete this church as soon as possible. I, I am I'm still convinced that the Thanksgiving service that comes uh, on that first Sunday uh, of December uh, will hold the Thanksgiving service, the annual Thanksgiving service in the main church. And that is my prayer. And I, am, I feel if we are able to do that, we will have done something that will go into the books of history and to the glory of God. May I remind us that the confirmation classes begins today at 2 p.m. 
So if you, are, you have registered uh, for confirmation class, the date will be set very soon. And we will only uh, present to the bishop for confirmation, only those candidates who have resumed uh, for the final leg or for the final uh, preparations. So kindly, let's make sure that happens. I, I have been struggling with starting a Bible study class in this church. And I have some challenges. But I want to believe that we can do it. The issue of uh, committed people to come and do it. In some churches, it is done very early in the morning. In others, it is done when people agree they can avail themselves. Kindly, if you would wish to join our Bible study class or classes, it depends on who registers so that we sit and agree on the day and time for the Bible study classes in this church. We need to do that. Kindly, if you are there with the, uh, the church secretary, Madam Jane, where are you? Jane is a tall lady. Nobody can see her wherever she is. Kindly, if you wish to join the Bible study class, uh, so we study that book, we study those other things to be able to enrich our spiritual life. Kindly register with Jane and the classes can start as early as yesterday. So this is something that we need to do and it is healthy for our spiritual life. The cell churches are on. Where there are challenges, we'll continue to deal with them. And I want to thank God for all those who have started to come. We had a very wrong chat with the Rome church, and uh, I, I want to thank God that it is, it is doing well. All the others are, are well, and where challenges are, we are trying to look at. Kindly inform the Rome Christians that coming Wednesday, the guest in their fellowship will be none other than this man speaking here. And I want to meet with all of you. Uh, what is the time? Can I be reminded the time for seven? And you know seven is seven, eh? Yeah, don't quit here in Guinea, quit here seven, because Ababu the vicar will be there. And I want to visit all the cell churches, and we'll see what happens as we move and proceed. So may God help us. The strength of this church the best place you can be attended to when you are low, when you are down, when you are high, when you are low, whatever situation you might be going through as a family, it can be well addressed in the cell church. And so every member, whether you can avail yourself uh, for the cell church prayers, kindly make sure you walk with those that meet. Because at a time, you will need us that cell and all of us know there are times we need those that are close to us and the closest people to us are not members of your family in Kirinyaga, in Embu, in Kisumu, in Moranga, wherever or in Kiambu, it is the cell church members who are so close, those who can run to put out fire if your house catches fire. So don't stay kamba mti ambao unakuwa katika bodeni ikiwa peke yake. So let's make sure we are not just members of this church, but we are also members of our cell churches. And we want to strengthen them because they are important. Madam Helen, can you take your microphone? Can we have another microphone for Patrick? Kindly, very fast. Praise the Lord, church. Uh, on behalf of the Vicar General and our uh, Mother's Union Committee, I want to say a big thanks to the ladies. You are really doing very, very well, and I thank God for you. But I just want to invite all of you, all members of this church, kindly come on Sunday prepared so that we can contribute and finish roofing this church so that at least by the end of the year, we'll all, of, all of us will celebrate of God's doing. There is a saying in Kikuyu 
which says Irichijiwa Yule Murua Rusindio. Mother's Union is just a name, but it is for all of us. Hallelujah. Iyo mbuzi tutakula sisi zote. So don't shy away. You say the way the economy is. God loves a cheerful giver. The little you have. Just come with it on Sunday and we know we'll make it. You will just take an envelope, even those who have contributed through our banks, you just take an envelope, write the amount you have given, and if, probably, um, if possible, you may indicate the date, your name, the date you send to the bank, if it is possible, and the amount, so that we'll be able to account for it. And um, I think that's all, unless Sister Jean, there is something else we are going to add. All right, the other thing, she's our secretary, so we keep on consulting. In this, this afternoon, our Vicar General is going to launch the Talent Week, which will start from tomorrow. So I'm inviting you all, ladies, please come at 3 o'clock. It will be a very short service, one hour. We'll have a fellowship with the family of our Vicar General and uh, Reverend Tiboro, and he will round that service. So on Saturday also, I would like to, if you'll be available, knowing it's, uh, we have busy schedule, those will be available, kindly come at 4 p.m., so that on Saturday, so that at least we can make uh, prepare the program on Sunday. Otherwise, me, I'm very, very, very positive. In God, there is nothing impossible. So the little you have, come with it on Sunday. I will finish, we will finish the roofing. Thank you, Vika General. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let us appreciate Madam Helen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So it's good to confirm that uh, the talent week begins today when we launch the week that begins tomorrow and the climax will be on sunday the 11th when we want to raise not less than 1.5 million uh, because that is the mother's union project which they took upon themselves to roof the church in terms of uh, buying or paying for the iron sheets. So can they let's all prepare that Sunday will be one of the best days as we proceed. We also want to remind all of us that we are now just about to go back to our normal routine when on every Sunday or maybe once after a while and we'll re uh, announce the date uh, so that we start preparing because I'm, I'm aware because I was in that meeting as I invite Patrick to come on, on uh, to come over so that he tells something. So we need to raise quite some money as Patrick will be letting us to know that. Coming Sunday will be a very special day. And I would wish we would invite your, your friends if you can. Because all of us are people we can uh, bring on board. The theme for next Sunday, which you see in our usual advert, is what makes a strong, what makes a family strong and successful. What makes a family strong and successful. Because that is what we should be looking uh, coming Sunday and maybe throughout the week. Because Manda's Union talked about Christian care for families. Christian care for families. Then how do we care if we do not know how to make our family? It doesn't matter whether you are two or three, whether you are single, whether you are married or not, you are a family and will be able to look at that. Kindly invite your friends. It will be uh, powerful for us to be blessed. Kindly, Pat, where you I don't want to invite uh, uh, Steve because I know you know what we want to tell these people. I just want you to do that. Get that microphone. You know what uh, the arrangement. You are very fast. Then we'll be able to move on. Good morning, church. Please the Lord. Uh, 
It is exciting to see the crowd grow, and uh, we thank God for that. Like the VG has said, we met on Friday uh, evening, uh, a meeting that led right into the night, and uh, we discussed several things regarding this project. And uh, among the many things that uh, we discussed, we realized that uh, the original strategy that we had to learn from 20 18 to 2020 may not be feasible, may not be realized. Uh, we may not be able to completely finish this project by the end of the year, and that's the reality uh, because uh, of the disruption that came with the pandemic. And uh, we decided uh, deliberately to concentrate uh, on what we call the critical remaining works uh, so that we can be able to realize what the VG has said uh, we sit here uh, in December to have that Thanksgiving uh, service. So we want to concentrate on those items that uh, we'll be able to uh, allow us to sit there on that day. But so between now and then, there are those things that we agreed that we want to do so that we can be able to, to sit there. And uh, among them, uh, it, is, uh, it will be, it will be a, a, a long, uh, a, 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 what I, I can call a crash program, uh, and uh, we also realize we are living in uh, difficult times, but uh, with God I know we are going uh, to make it. Uh, I don't know, Sami, we had prepared a, a small schedule to, to show you that, that. So those are the items that we want to concentrate on. Uh, between now and uh, December, so that we can be able to uh, make that place habitable. Uh, and I know you look at the figures, uh, they may look big, but I can tell you, uh, we have come from far. From coin zero to coin 440 million is not a joke. So even this, I'm sure that uh, we are going to, to make it. Uh, we want to do the iron sheets and uh, the saturation, and the saturation is what the engineer tells me cools the room. Uh, that will cost about 2.3 million. The gutters and the downpipes uh, will do about uh, 500,000. Then we'll do the concrete steps on the left side uh, of the project so that we can be able, you, if you've been able to pass through there, you can see they are not there. We'll be able to put those ones so that we can uh, have everybody there about a million. Then we owe the contractor some money, not a 1.2, it's a bit more, but if you can give him 1.2, he can be able to get back on site and be able to put uh, those things that we want in place. Then we'll be able to complete uh, the tower and put up the cloth, uh, because I'm told the church is not complete without a cloth, uh, at around 300,000. Uh, and uh, the total of this, uh, what we are calling critical items, we have paid about uh, 900,000 uh, for the iron sheets. Uh, so between now and then, we require about 4.4 uh, 4 million. 4.4 uh, million looking at it holistically looks big, but I know we can be able to make it. Uh, like I've said, it is hard times, but uh, it is in hard times uh, that people are tested. And I would want you also to test God. Maybe tell him, I only have uh, this little flour or this uh, little oil for one meal, and I want to give it. And then you'll see uh, how he's going to multiply that oil until the whole village cannot be able to handle it. And I hope you, cannot, uh, you can be able to relate with that. So let us test God with the little that we have uh, between now and then, and uh, we, we are going to realize this. Uh, the VG has talked about the Mother's Union Day, uh, and uh, the target is about 1.5 million. If we assist them with the 5,000, I think, for the, mem for the offic uh, officials, the 3,000 for the other ladies, 2,000 for the men, and I think 1,000 for, uh, for the youth, if I'm getting that light. If all of us can come in, and even come with more, not only just 2,000, 3,000, anything that you, you have, we can be able to realize that 1.5 million. Then you also realize we had uh, arranged a, a Halambe pre-COVID. It was supposed to be there in June. 
but it was not possible because of the pandemic. Uh, so we realized that we can have one uh, in November, uh, November 8th. Uh, we can, after, immediately after the Mother's Union, we then gear up towards uh, November 8th, uh, then we can have a, a fundraiser to be able to realize uh, that. And uh, the last time I mentioned some figures here, I said we have about six point something million pending in terms of pledges. Uh, if you can be able to dig deep and uh, bring something between now and then, I'm sure uh, on that day, we can be able to realize the three million that will be pending after we pay 1.5 million during the Mother's Day. And uh, I think after that, it will be a smooth sailing to achieve what the VG has said, uh, to make that place habitable uh, by the, day, the Thanksgiving date. And I think all of us uh, can be able to fit there, like I've said before, uh, and then we can, uh, no, we can uh, uh, hold up this uh, tents and have everybody, even these people watching us at home, can come and uh, we fellowship together. That's, uh, the, the, those are just the highlights among the many things that we discussed. And I think, uh, God willing, we are going to move together. And I want to thank you for the fact that uh, you have supported us. May God bless you. Uh, thank you very much. Vigil. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Just hand it over that direction. Let's give him a better appreciation, kindly. Thank you. Yeah, even the appreciating somebody is so, so important. I know there is a very uh, bunch of banana that has been brought as uh, the first fruit, and uh, we want to thank the one who did bring uh, that uh, part of his giving to God, and we, we want to appreciate that. And also at the uh, table, we also have fast fruit envelopes. So it's good whether it is a bunch of banana, whether it is uh, uh, monies, whether it is whatever else, kindly always pick your envelope. If you have your fast fruits, you know this is not something you are in debt with the vicar or the church. You are in debt with God who gave you whatever uh, he gave you. So take responsibility and do that. We have a new uh, version of the offertory envelope, which will solve a lot of problems for us. Those of us who uh, as we continually require, uh, continually require that you forward a message uh, when you give your offer tray uh, so that we may know who. So kindly, we want to avoid as much as we can uh, paying cash. And so we encourage the use of that tier number, 153,373, and our pay bills and all those pay bills and the tail numbers are well indicated on the alphatory uh, envelope. So on this env envelope, which we expect, even if you give through the uh, M-Pesa, kindly pick your, your envelope. We have so many of them. And indicate your name. If it is cash, there is a place you feel it is cash. If it is M-Pesa giving, if you did it through uh, tier number, you just tick the column for the tier number. Those of you who have these envelopes, and if you don't have one, kindly make sure you give your offer tray through this envelope. Now that one, we, we need to do away with it. We need to be accountable. We need even to know who are these people who support the church. Because not just uh, giving, but let's uh, make sure that we are able, if you don't have an offertory uh, uh, envelope, whether you are giving through M-Pesa, whether you are giving through, just take the envelope and indicate you gave through tail number, you gave through the pay bill number, and how much is it, and the date. That, those details are on that envelope. Even those numbers on the screen are on this envelope. So it will be very easy for you uh, to use your phone with the numbers with you on your uh, fingertip. So kindly, if you don't have an envelope, this is mine, and I want to use it, and I'm paying my offer today through M-Pesa till number, but I need to sign this. So the, 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 the office will know it is Jane, it is one, we have your numbers, and we want to make sure even those of us uh, who are 
uh, active and support the church, kindly make sure it is not something hidden. We want to be accountable and transparent. We also need even to know those who support the church. Yeah, when the offertories go down, we don't know even who is giving. Kindly indicate you give an offertory of 10,000, of 1,000, of 500, of 200, whatever. Let's know. Uh, so there is no more hiding as you bring your, your, your offertory. Kindly use that envelope. It is safe and we'll be able even to know. Wilson Kamau Mwangi gave 2,000 for offertory through to your number or through the pay bill number 777001 or pay bill number 247247. It is very, very important for accountability and transparency even in our giving as a church. We keep records. So we need to know who are these people who give their offertory to the church, who give their tithe, who give their thanksgiving, we we'll need to have that list. Maybe one day I will come and tell you, out of 800 people, only 300 give their offering, give their tithes, give their thanksgiving, because we keep records. And in our systems, I just need to click a button, and I know how you people support the church. So kindly, let's take it seriously. Pick your envelope, fill in the details, and we'll be able to update your record on our systems. And that will be good. In this envelope, we have also even in, I mean, uh, in the messages, in the advert that are usually sent uh, on Friday or Saturdays to talk about uh, every Sunday. I also did send the TU number for the Mother's Union. Just open your, your, your WhatsApp group. The Mother's TU number is there. The Mother's Union TU number is there. So the TU number is us on the screen, 5410151. And the account number when you do the pay bill, all those records are also on your WhatsApp uh, page. Kindly check on these details because they are important. Now I want to request uh, Madam Nancy to do the reading as we proceed quickly. Praise the Lord. The, our reading today is taken from the Gospel according to Saint Matthew, chapter 18, beginning to read from verses 23 through 35. Matthew, chapter 18, verse 23, beginning uh, and through 35. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owned him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay everything, back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owned him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servants fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged 
and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just I, as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he, could, he should pay back all he owned. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. And Amen. this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we all be upstanding? Tafadali, let's all stand up. Let's all stand up. Shall we pray? Speak to us, dear Lord, even as you use the voice of a human being. Let us hear you. Let us know your word and obey it, that our lives will not be compared to that friend of ours who could not forgive his fellow worker and was put to jail. And you have said that this will happen to us if we don't forgive one another. Speak to us, Lord, and bless us in Jesus' name. Can you be seated? Thank you so much. Praise the Lord, church. Wilson Kamau Mwangi is my name. I love the Lord Jesus. He's Lord and Savior of my heart. And I've decided uh, to follow him all the days of my life. And this day, even as I take this opportunity to share with you uh, very briefly on uh, the very uh, powerful uh, theme for this Sunday, some of you have been able to uh, come across that, uh, that theme uh, in our advert for our Sunday services on Facebook and on YouTube as, as we continue to inform because information is power. Today, as I said, that um, uh, the theme that I would want to share with you within a very short while is the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. And from the story that we have just read from the, uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, you see exactly what happened to those people who are working uh, together for that company. Uh, and you see that gentleman who owed the, the employer a lot of monies. And uh, when it came to the notice and he was called, he knelt, he cried, he prayed, and the boss forgave him. But on the way, he came across a colleague who owed him maybe a hundred shillings. And the colleague pleaded with him, and he could not listen. And he put that man in jail. And then the verse that is so important to me, verse number 34 and verse number 35, it says, In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is very heartening that I'm reading now. And, G and it says that this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Now, when you talk about forgiveness, a gentleman by the name Lewis, and it's on the screen, theologian Lewis Mendes writes that to forgive is to set a prisoner free. And also you discover that the prisoner was you. So when you keep heart, when you keep the pain in your heart, because somebody wronged you, somebody did something bad to you, you become a prisoner. And so when you forgive, you set yourself free from that jail that you have been living for many, many, many years. The psychologists themselves generally define forgiveness 
as a conscious, deliberate decision that I make, that you make, to release the feelings of resentment or vengeance towards a person or group who has harmed you. Forgiveness is a conscious, deliberate decision to release those feelings in you of resentment or vigilance towards a person or group who has harmed you, regardless of whether they actually deserve the forgiveness. Some people don't even ask forgiveness, but it means, according to the psychologist, whether whoever has harmed you or hurt you seeks forgiveness. If you forgive, even without being asked, then you release yourself from prison. So it is whether or regardless of whether they actually deserve your forgiveness. So forgiveness does not mean forgetting, nor does it mean condoning or excusing offenses. It doesn't. No, 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 no. Forgiveness is such a great, such a great thing that whoever misses will not be forgiven by God and will be thrown into the hell of fire as the word of God says. And so, ladies and gentlemen, theologian Rewis again says, to forgive, making that a deliberate and conscious decision to let go, then you set yourself free from that prison of anger and hate and resentment. And you become free and you live your life. You don't know when you are angry, you are just nearing the end of your life in this world. And we have seen what has happened to very many. Now, forgiveness means giving up the suffering of the past and being willing to forgo ahead with far greater potential of inner freedom. You know, from inside, when you have that inner freedom in you, then you really become a real human. And you are able to enjoy because you remember what Jesus said that he came that you might have life and have it in abundance. And so without that greater potential of that inner freedom, then you live less human. And you cannot enjoy your life. Brethren, besides the reward of letting go of the painful past, there are powerful, healthy benefits that go hand in hand with the practice of forgiveness. Those spiritual, those healthy benefits that might serve a new need, they go hand in hand if you are able to practice the issue of forgiveness. Forgiveness is so powerful and we need it to live as a husband and wife. We need it to live as a family. We need to have it to live as colleagues working in the same institution. We need it as members of this church and beyond. Forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, transforms anger and heart into healing and peace. And so when the pastor stands at the altar and declares peace, that may the peace of God that passes all understanding, it cannot get into you. It cannot get into you because in your heart it is filled with anger. It is filled with heart. And so unless you are able to forgive, it will not work for you. So forgiveness when you forgive, when you release yourself from that prison, and then the, 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 the anchor in you is transformed, the heart is gone, then you are healed, and you have that peace of God which passes all understanding in your life, and you become a real husband, you become a real wife, you become a real man or woman or even youth, and you live your life in fullness. And enjoy it as Koheredu says, or the preacher Ecclesiastes says, enjoy your life when you're young, because evil days are coming. 
Evil days are coming. So we need to prepare. Forgiveness can help me. Forgiveness can help you to overcome feelings of depression. Feelings of anxiety. It can do away with rage. Marakara masyo. Rage in kiuru. Even as well as personal and relational conflicts in our lives and in our families. There are a lot of relation, relational conflicts that do not end, that have rent to one killing one another. Whether it's the husband or the wife or the children or a neighbor, it doesn't matter. When this feeling of depression, anxiety, and rage as well as the, 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 those what you call personal and relational conflicts are ah, what is in your life then your life can never be desired by anybody including your children we have heard of children when the father comes they have to go underneath the bed they go to sleep there are people you can even find on the road as you go and you feel because this is your enemy, you hate that person, you can even look for a shortcut not to meet that person. Even in places where we go to buy whatever we buy, sometimes we are so much in debt that you tend to run away and go to other places. So ladies and gentlemen, it is about making the conscious decision to let go of that grudge that you have held for years, for months. There are husbands and wives who cannot speak to one another for a week, for a month, for a year. I remember in one of the parishes I served, not Kenyatta Road, I had to reconcile a family which had stayed for about 10 years like strangers in the same, in the same, in the same house. And we had to do a lot of struggle, including taking the husband and the wife even for VCT, for them to return back to where they were. Ten years living like strangers in a house. And I believe even around in this church, we could have been people who have been going through hell in their lives. Even wishing to live. Like your brother usually says, sometimes when it becomes, Kiora gai and ma kwatia in Aruka. Yeah, some people here are waiting just to jump like that flock because it is too hot. You cannot bear this man. You cannot bear this woman. You cannot bear your son. You cannot bear your neighbor. You cannot bear even your pastor. You are so wagged that you can eat him fresh without cutting him into pieces. So I'm saying, my brothers, the issue of forgiveness, it is about making that conscious decision to let go of that grudge and you start living. Because you could be a walking corpse. You could be walking, but you don't live a life. You call yourself a Christian. You don't live your faith. You are just a muhiano. What is a muhiano? What do you call a muhiano? Image, eh? Higher, whatever you call it. Now, you, you could be not what we see in you. Because when you go to your home, you are a devil. But in church, you are an angel. There was a day, I don't know whether men, you watched the, 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 the man day when uh, there were people on TV and talking about the problems and the challenges they go uh, through with their, from their wives. I watched it with my wife and I, I felt like I could just get that, that woman and struggle her life. I could not bear hearing some of the stories that men go through. Now come to the other side. The struggles and the pains that women go through in the hands of their husbands just because they cannot forgive. So let that grudge go. If you don't, then you are in trouble. And your life will never be what you want to do. Now, why would anyone want to forgive someone who has wronged him or her in the past? Why? 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 It is not about letting someone off the hook. No, 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 no. It doesn't mean you forgive that Mudosio Nertu Ikamura Ika. No, 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 no. You still remain the same person, but you release yourself from that prison. Yeah? It doesn't mean that when you forgive, you forget. No, 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 no. 
Now, you don't forget about the past. You don't forget about the pain. But you let go and start living because you need exactly that. It certainly does not mean that you stick around for further maltreatment from the boss or partner or friend. You cannot allow somebody to continue mistreating you because you are forgiven. We are Kenyans. There is the law in this country. There are rules and regulations for Christians. There are ethics that we as Christians must abide to. And I remind all of us, when you were baptized and became a Christian, you gave the church mandate for, to, to, to cater and care for your spiritual life. So when you do good, we appreciate you. When you do wrong, we tell you you have done wrong. And you need to come back on the way of the Lord for you to live as you need to live. So we no need to say no to maltreatment from any corner because it is, it is bad and it should not be around. It is about setting yourself, my friend, free so that you can move forward in your own life. It is about setting yourself free so that you can move forward in your own life. Somebody by the name John Borisenko said in an interview once, you can forgive someone who wronged you and still call the police and testify in court. Because there is also that part that we need to help that person who is doing those wrongs. He might be sick. He might be sick. And we need to protect ourselves. We cannot allow mistreatment to continue. So we take action. As a church, as a country, as a citizen, you can forgive somebody, but still call a police because he, my person, is a, a drug addict. Yes, you forgive. But he continues taking drugs. The, the next day, he'll kill you. Why should you allow that kind of a situation? So, Joan says, you can forgive someone who has wronged you, but you still call the police. And when the police needs you in court, you testify about the wrongs that person has done so that he can take responsibility. And when we are aware that this can happen, if this can happen even from a Christian point of view, then I need to be very careful not to do things that will lead me uh, to those other bad places. I don't have a lot of time, brethren. My time is almost over, but may I say this? Forgiveness requires a deep inquiry within ourselves. Each and every one of us has a story to tell. And the challenges that you have gone through, you need to do that deep inquiry about, you know, about within yourself. That is story that has, you have struggled with for all the years because you have to let go of that. Some of us are suffering as a result of so many weaknesses and so many bad things that even our parents did. You talk of a generational Pass. The way you relate with your parents, it could lead you to being cast or blessed. The way you treat your parents, the same way your children and the nation will treat you. And this is a direct blessing. So when I talk about relationships, which we'll be talking more coming Sunday, I'm talking of a very important aspect of our lives. So forgiveness means giving up suffering of the past and being willing to forge ahead with far greater potential for inner freedom. And Lamot famously declared those many years ago. Now forgiveness, ladies and gentlemen, it's so, so important. And without it, you do not live again. You die and you'll be walking a dead person. Now, in the physical domain, forgiveness is associated with lower heart, late, and broad pleasure, as well as what you call overall stress relief. Kila mmoja wetu akona stress zake, 
The difference is how you manage the stress. And so what I'm saying, in the physical domain, not now the spiritual domain, now forgiveness is associated with that lower heart rate and blood pressure. Very many people are suffering from blood pressure and stress, and they cannot be happy. I wish there was a needle. I can go around giving each and every one an injection just to get that bad past that continues to hurt you, that continues to destroy your life, just to change. But I say it from the word go, it is a deliberate conscience decision that you make to let that go. So it is also associated with improving physical systems and reducing fatigue. Once I had a very serious accident. That was back in the year 2012. I had spent the day so well in church and we had done so well. I remember it was on January 12th. And as I was going home very tired, I think I was so fatigued. I don't know exactly what happened. But I found that I had knocked a motorcycle carrying three passengers and my car jumped the police blocks. It was stopped by the blocks. I don't know whether I was asleep or what has happened. Fatigue is a serious illness. I thank God that case ended and I was pronounced innocent because the police caused the accident. In some patient, patient is in one we are going to. In some patient populations, and improving sleep quality. Some of us <laughs> cannot even get sleep. You need to take some medicine to sleep. Last night I was trying to counsel somebody who told me, "No, no, 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 me, I cannot sleep. I just want to drag myself." And, and I said, no, 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 you don't need to do that. You just need to deal with the issues and forgive and repent, and you sleep like a baby. I'm very good at that. I sleep like a baby. When I get even on the seat, maybe I, I don't have anything that is disturbing my mind. And I'm tired. Just sleep. My wife sometimes struggles to wake me up because I'm asleep. And I want to sleep. But people cannot find a sleep. Why? Because they are angry. They are bitter. They have not been able even to forgive those who sin them. Now, in the psychological domain now, when you talk about the mind of the person. Now, forgiveness has been shown to diminish the experience of stress. And that in a conflict, while simultaneously restoring positive thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. That is psychology. And, and we also need to do that uh, to understand what happens when we are there. Now, the problem for many of us, me included, is that sometimes we can choose to forgive another, but still in our hearts of hearts, the anger and resentment lingers and continues. And you have to let go so that you can live. However, it is in fact possible to forgive and truly let go of the past disappointment Hearts and blatant acts of abuse. It is possible. It is possible. Although at times may seem impossible, forgiveness is a teachable and a learnable skill that can dramatically improve with practice over time. You know, it is said that practice, practice makes perfect. Practice, practice makes perfect perfect. Don't wait. Just try it. And it will work. It worked for me once. Back in the year 1989. And somebody really hurt me. A big person. And I had to seek advice from my elders. Just trying to find out wow, how can I deal with this person who have done this? 
And I was given two options. One of the options was, I take one or two people, go and sit down with that person and talk about it. And sometimes it could not even work. The other alternative was, I pray to God and I forgive that person and never remember the hearts that I got from that person. And I opted for that option. Because I knew, ata tukikaa chini, si mtu ambao anaweza kusikiza. So it will be another wall. I forgive that person from my heart. And that man, by me forgiving him, he turned to be my best friend in that parish. And even when he died, because he died after that, he died as a great friend of Wilson. Just try forgiveness. And you see how your life will be. It will not be the kind of problematic life that you have been leading. Now Harvard researcher and physician John Violet describes forgiveness as one of the eight positive emotions. My time is gone, my brothers. That keep us connected with the deepest selves and others. Forgiveness here described us one of the eight positive emotions that keep us connected uh, with deepest selves and how they in the mono 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 and even with others outside there. So, and this gentleman considers these positive emotions to be key ingredients that bind us together in our humanity, and they include kindly note, kindly note these positive emotions. You remember for a number of Sundays we talked about emotions and how to manage them. Now these emotions I'm talking about, they are so key ingredients in, ter in, 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 in terms of binding us together in our humanity and they crude. One is love. Love one another. A new commandment Jesus gave. Hope. To be hopeful of better things. There is joy, there is compassion, there is faith, there is awe, and there is gratitude. These are the positive ingredients that are key to bringing us together as human beings. I'm just about to come to their end. But may I say this, ladies and gentlemen, whether you have a spiritual bent, whether you are spiritual or not, you could be baptized, but you are not spiritual. Just a name cannot make you spiritual. But when you are spiritual, it means you are being rooted and built up in Christ. You read the word of God. You pray, you speak to God. You serve and minister in your cell church and in the church. And you are part of whatever is happening in the church. You just keep a roof. No, 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 no. It will not work for you. Now, may I say this. Whether you have a spiritual bent or not, the research that was done supports the notion that developing strong, positive emotions, supporting, I mean, uh, developing stronger, positive emotions, this supports us in leading healthier, happier, and more connected lives. When I'm connected with my wife, when I'm connected with my children, when I'm connected with my parents, my brothers and sisters, when I'm connected with the inner circle, when I'm connected with the people I work with, when, you know life becomes so beautiful that you'd even think of living here and telling Jesus not to come because you have it. But some of us are just wishing the Lord Jesus come quickly. This world has become hell. We want to go to heaven where the roads are, are made of gold and the right is Jesus Christ. So ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, how, how can we desire to lead that healthier, happier and more connected lives? It cannot happen without forgiveness. It cannot. You remain in jail and you die in jail and you go to hell. But you can set yourself free by just mentioning the words, I forgive you. 
I forgive you. These are magical words. Tell your wife, I forgive you. Whether you found him in bed with another man, you can still forgive. Yes. 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 Forgiveness is magical. And it brings back a husband and a wife who had even divorced. When we forgive and develop these other positive emotions, the love, the joy, all those that I mentioned up there, then, ladies and gentlemen, we become less encumbered by the scars of the past. And then we live real life, life in its abundance. And we pass the same to our children. When the parents are fighting day, morning, afternoon, and all the other times, being watched by their children, being watched by the community, what are you telling others that your God cannot help you? Because all of us must be good role models to whoever sees out there. To our children, to our wives, to our, to our whoever. And what you do to others, note, it will be done to you. You shall not go to the grave until you test what you did take others through. Don't bury I'm telling you. So the magical words I'm talking about today, the power of forgiveness changing your life and making you to live and enjoy life before the Lord Jesus comes to you. May the Lord help us, brothers and sisters. The forgiveness is magical and it works miracles in lives of people and brings people together and they are able to serve God and the community without those sufferings that we go through. God help us with pray. That we understand that you say that if we do not forgive others, we'll be thrown into prison like that gentleman of Matthew chapter number 18 and verse number 35 who was thrown in jail. Help us, oh God, to avoid that by speaking the magical words, I forgive. Us, you forgive us. When we pray to you, we ask you to forgive us as we forgive others. Let it be real. Let it be practical in our lives that we become a strong nation, strong family, strong church family as we serve and wait for your second coming. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. We give all the glory to Jesus, and tell of his love, and tell of his love. We give all the glory to Jesus, and tell of his wonderful love. Now we'll have the offer tray hymn. The hymn that we give, all oh, the offerings, the tithes, the thanksgiving, church construction monies, ile pesa ya mother's union, ambayo wanachukua na all their desk outside there. Let's get all the baskets in place very fast as we do that song choir. Please kumtegemea mwokozi uh, kwangu tamu kabisa. Shall we all be upstanding? Use your envelopes and do what you need to do. Even those outside, kindly let us stand up. Ata wale walio inje tafadali tusumame. Na tufanya kuharaka kidogo.
Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for the blessings of life, the blessings of good health, and the blessings of substances. This that we have brought in front of you is part of the many that you have given us. We want to thank you for giving us that we can be able to come and worship you with part of that which you have blessed us with. Them that have given the offerings, those that have given thanksgiving, those that have given their tithes, and even those that have given their first fruits, and even those that have given for the construction. Jehovah God, we want to pray that collectively you bless us even as you receive them and as you sanctify them to become useful in this church, in this parish, and even in the diocese. Continue to bless us and to give us more that can be enough for us and for godliness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we be seated for the final blessing? And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Once again, we thank you so, so much for availing yourself for this service. We want to say, may the Lord bless you, and we want to wish you a very blessed week ahead as we meet next Sunday for the big day for the Mother's Union, and as we raise the 1.5 million and above to roof our church. Let's continue giving, and the Sunday will be the climax. Now, can we be given the recession hymn? I will sing the wondrous story of Christ who died for me. Shall we all be upstanding? And thank you so much. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Yes, I'll see.